Well, hello, Stampers, and happy Wednesday to you. So welcome to the monthly global video hop. And the theme this month is simple stamping. And actually, that's one of my favorite things to do. The simple joy of um, inking up a stamp and putting it to paper just brings me great joy. And I'm looking forward to see what the other talented uh, members of this group have to offer. So you can follow along on this video hop through, I think there's at least 10 of us all around the world. The links are all in the description under, under the video. Just be sure to click on show more and then everyone will show up. So I'm looking forward to it and I have a little funny story that I'm not sure if you know. So I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Chatham, Ontario, Canada. And I never knew why Stampin' Up! had that name. And someone, I think it was a week or two ago that I heard, I don't even know who it was, and it was Stamp and Up. So you stamp and up. So anyway, that's, I thought maybe you'd be interested to hear that. So we are going to transfer to, so you can see what I'm doing. And here we go. How cool is that? So we're using this stamp set Flowing Flowers, which I absolutely love. And the reason I chose this is because you're going to get the look that you see on this, um, on the case. You're going to get that with just one color. You don't have to do anything fancy. And that's called a distinctive stamp. So the stamp is manufactured so that you will get different shades with just a simple stamp. So let's get started. We're using Pear Pizzazz Polished Pink. We're going to have a little piece of this polished pink ribbon. And we're going to use basic white cardstock, basic black, and then the card itself is going to be polished pink. So let's get started and, and cut up those layers. Okay, so we'll just move that out of the way. I thought maybe you'd like to see, sometimes people have a hard time with measuring. So the trick is to have a good paper trimmer. So my white piece is going to be four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut two, one for the outside, one for the inside, and I see that I need to order new blades. When your blade starts getting a little bit um, dull, the, our white cardstock is the first one to complain. It doesn't like a dull blade. And when it gets dull, you get that, see that little rough edge? And sometimes you want that rough edge. You can sand it off and then your blade will last a little longer. Now for the black, we wanna go 1 8 of an inch bigger. So we're gonna go four and an eighth by five and three eighths. There, and I only need one of those, so I'm just gonna put those away. And then for the card, I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And the scoring blade is the light one. So back and forth, and then we're gonna cut it at five and a half. So there we have it. Now I have everything that I need. I'm just gonna put this on the floor. So now we're gonna do the fun part. We're gonna stamp. And this is called collage stamping because I'm gonna randomly stamp the same image. I'm putting some white underneath and I'm going to use this big flower and we're gonna use polished pink ink. Now I'm going to try to keep my bold flowers along the edge. Tap, tap, tap. And you want to make sure you're going off your edge a little bit too, okay? And you want to rotate a little bit. But do you see how beautiful this stamp is? Do you see all the different textures and layers there? Just loving it. And you know what I should have done and I didn't do? I want to stamp off in between, but we'll do that in a minute. So a little bit here, a little bit there. And now I'm inking up the whole thing, stamping, and then stamping kind of like that. I just want to fill in so that it's not white. I want to get a pink color wash in behind, see? So that's what I have now. Then we're going to take our words. Let me close this up. And actually, we're going to stamp another one, but anyway, that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Now we're going to take our pear pizzazz, and I'm just going to stamp this happy birthday randomly all over. I would like one to be seen, so there. And I 
we go. Collage stamping makes us quiet. And there. So that looks nice. And the last thing we're going to do is add a little bit of this in green. Just a little bit here and there. Um, and that looks good. There, wasn't that easy? My goodness. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Stamparatus and we're going to take that extra piece of white that I have and I should probably trim it up. We'll do that. We'll trim the white piece. We'll cut it in half to five and a half just so that I have two pieces. And now what I'm going to do is I want to stamp some leaves to cut and I want to stamp a flower, okay? And I have it in here already. But when you use a rubber stamp, you do not need this insert, okay? I was just showing someone how to use that. So now I'm just going to take this off, put it up here. And all I really need is the leaves for this. So we're gonna ink it up. And I'm hoping that spring is in the air. In Canada here, the temperature has gone up to zero which is, if you're in the States, that's 32 Fahrenheit. But by Sunday, it's supposed to go up to plus 14. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm guessing about 60, maybe? I don't know. See, so I'm just going to cut out those leaves. That's all I want. Now, the other thing I want to do, I'm just going to turn this around. And I should clean this off, but I don't see my cleaner, so I'm just going to carefully lift it off. And I want this flower... I'm going to stamp it a bit. I'm going to, I want to cut this one, so I'm going to see if I can stamp it twice. Sometimes with a distinctive stamp, you don't want to stamp over and over, because then you'll lose that distinctiveness if it gets too dark. So let's have a look and see. We're going to try it. I have one already that I've already stamped and cut out, just in case. It's called insurance. So there's one. And now we'll do another layer and see what happens. There's another layer. Actually, you know what? I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna close up my inks. And then we have a really cool trick yet with the flower. So don't go away. I haven't done this trick in forever. So I'm hoping it turns out. So what I'm gonna do now is fussy cut this flower. I've already fussy cut the leaves. So you don't have to watch me do that. I have them right here. And I have this, this flower already done, but see how much brighter this one is? I really do like it that I could use the Stamparatus. So let's get that cut. And I don't have my Stampin' Up! paper snips here. I do love my Stampin' Up! paper snips. They get into those corners really well. Um, and I bought a second pair just for my um, ribbon. Because ribbon, if you cut... If, if you try to cut ribbon with the same scissors that you cut paper, you're not going to have a very good result because paper actually dulls your scissors. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. So just buy a second pair of paper snips and tie a scrap of ribbon around the handle and it will remind everybody that those are your ribbon scissors. And train your children while they're young. They should know right away that ribbon scissors or fabric scissors are not to be used for cutting paper. That was a huge sin in my household. My mom was a, a seamstress. She was a very talented seamstress. She could sew anything and she made her own patterns. Yeah, my mom is feisty. She's gonna be 90 in April and she's taking care of my 95 year old father and she was in the hospital the other day because her leg just started spurting blood by her ankle. So she went to, by ambulance to the hospital at 10 p.m. She was home at 2 a.m. The next morning she's in the kitchen trying to make lunch. I'm telling you. And, and sponge bathing my father. It's like we're hoping, we were hoping that this incident would finally persuade her to accept some help. But we're not thinking it's going to happen. Okay, so I have the flower. And I'm going to use the Stamparatus mat. And then I have oat milk. So this is my pokey tool. And I have another one, but it seems to be missing. 
So I found it. So the P Pokey tool, you can take this, see, it has lots of, it's got a little small stylus and it's got a big stylus. I have two, um, but it also has a Pokey on the end or a little lifter thing. So that's, it's a quite a handy tool. Um, some people love this thing at the end, this little putty picker up thing, but I, I do war with it. it, it I, I should just keep trying and maybe we'll use it later. But now I'm just going to go in here with little circles. And when I do this, you know what, I'm going to try to zoom in a bit for you. Let's have a look if I can do this. My mouse is not being very cooperative. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going in little circles, and that stretches out the paper, and that'll make it curl up a little bit along the edges. And you can see how it's just flipping up a little bit. And it's really a simple technique, but it really gives you dimension to your petals and your flower doesn't look as flat. And I thought it was really cool. I in the in the description I will um, I will give credit. I think it's Joe Blackman that I got that I was inspired by for this card, but I'm not sure. So I will check to make sure I give proper credit because it was her card that really just made me want this set. I just love these colors, and it's just lovely. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm not doing the middle, I'm just doing the edges. Okay, there, that looks nice. All right, so now we're gonna put our card together. Are you ready to see what's gonna happen? So we have our black piece and we have our pink piece. So the black piece can go on the, well, let me move all my leaves, I don't wanna lose them. The black piece is gonna go on this one. <laughs> can't think of the word. What color is it again? Polished pink. And I'm using a liquid adhesive because I I really love it. I love that it adheres so well. These cards will not fall apart. And it's cheap. And it gives you some wiggle room so that in case you have it on crookedly, you can slide it into the right position. I think that is the best perk of this adhesive especially when you're dealing with just tiny little margins. There, that's good. And now we're going to take a piece of this ribbon. And you know what? I did have my ribbon scissors handy, but here, now I can show you my paper snips. See, I have paper snips and they have this on them. I got this from Stampin' Up, so um, I'm using that instead of a ribbon tied around for these ones. It makes them easy to find. So I think that's going to go up about yay high. So now on the back, we're just going to put a little stamp and seal. And I put it probably way further than I have to just to give me some wiggle room. So about there. So I'm just pressing that on the back holding it, eyeballing it to see that it's level. If you really are fussy about those kind of things, you could use grid paper. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit so that you can see a bit more of my card. Okay, so now this could go on the black piece. Okay, look how nice that's looking. It just gives a nice little frame. Um, yeah, you know what, I was thinking maybe I don't need to use that liquid, but I'm going to. And carefully turn that over. And I do have some regular adhesive here, so I'm standing up. Because I won't be able to move it around completely. There. Okay, and now... I'm going to pop up this flower and we're going to tuck the leaves under. So I'll pop up the flower with some dimensionals. And you can see how, let me lift it up a little bit. Can you see how the paper got molded by doing that little technique? It's 
pretty cool. And there. I should have been careful as to where I was putting the, the dimensionals, and I, I wasn't. See, so now we're just going to slide a few of those underneath. Put a little bit of Tombow on here. There. And I totally covered up my beautiful happy birthday. I see that now. So, but you get the idea. People will see, you know, and in the inside we can write a big happy birthday. But I love this vintage. Well, I don't know why I'm doing that kind of backwards, but there. And then we'll put another leaf on the other side. And actually, I did this one backwards. There. And you could add more leaves if you want. That's all I'm going to do. And then we're going to finish it off with a few gems. And I have these. I don't even know if these are still in the catalog. There's all kinds of gems that you can add to this. Um, there's no rules. Big ones, little ones. These are like, they look like big water drops. And I like that. The pokey tool is wonderful. The pick-me-up tool is wonderful for... Um, picking up little gems. And you could add more. I just added three. And then there. Isn't that nice? And now we'll just finish off the inside. Remember I had cut two. So now we'll stamp a happy birthday that people can actually read. So I'm going to do that in pear pizzazz. And there we go. Happy birthday. We could add the extra flower here um, in the inside, but I kind of like that. I would rather stamp it. So let's see. Oh, I lost my pattern paper. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use this as a, an old scrap of paper from keeping score from a game. Whatever works, right? Let's get that. You know what? I still have the stamp on my stamp apparatus, so we're going to do that. I'm just going to use it again. <clears throat> oh, and I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Don't need that. However, I don't want to get that dirty. We do have grid paper that fits right in there, but I don't have it handy. So I'm going to do this. And I want it turned like this. Because otherwise... It's not going to fit. Sorry, lots of stuff happening here. All right, let's get that into view. I'm going to peel that off and put it right on the corner like that. And then, oh, that even looks pretty just like that, really light. I might just leave it like that. Oh, because that way you can write and you can go right over top of that. Yes. I'm going to leave it. I'm done. Now we'll put that in the inside of the card, and then we're good to go. Look how pretty. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, sometimes I just put adhesive at the top so people can take that out to re-gift it, but I'm going to be difficult and do the whole thing. And now they can't re-gift it. This is for someone who's sentimental and keeps all handmade cards. There. there, I'm just trying to ease it into place, but this will have to do. So, I hope that you like my simple stamping card. I think it's lovely. This makes me happy. It's a great card for spring. And like I said, if you want, if you live in Canada and you want any of the supplies, you could just click in the links. All the supplies to shop in my online store are there. And do check out the rest of the, um, the people on the Global Video Hop. And it's always so nice. We love it so much when you leave a comment or give a thumbs up. And be sure to hit that red button on the bottom corner to subscribe. That makes us happiest of all. Okay. Thank you. Have a super day. And I'm so happy that you joined me. Bye.